Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Welcome to the broadcast ministry of Irvington Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for today's Bible study. Okay, today we're in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth the canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Here in Second Timothy chapter number 2, we have here the Apostle Paul uh, continuing his letter here to Timothy, and uh, overall he wants to let Timothy, uh, he wants to encourage Timothy rather, and uh, uh, let him know that in being in the ministry, he's going to have to endure hardness. Paul wanted Timothy to know that the ministry is hard. And if you'll be honest, the, the ministry, it, it is hard. Uh, the, there's a lot of opposition to the ministry. A lot of times people in the ministry uh, don't do the things that you would uh, prefer that they would do. D maybe you don't get supported in the way that you think that you ought to be uh, supported and, and different things along those those lines. So the Apostle Paul uh, uh, likens us to soldiers. And as a soldier, uh, you have to stay on point. 
you have to uh, continue uh, on your calling. You have to continue on the uh, on the the task uh, that you've been given. You have to endure hardness. You have to endure through that hardness. You have to continue working and laboring through the hard stuff, uh, not just when it's easy. Paul wanted Timothy to know the ministry is hard, but we are not in the ministry for convenience sake. Uh, we're not in the ministry because it's easy. We're not in the ministry even uh, uh, of our own calling. Uh, we're in the ministry because of what the, uh, what the Lord has called us to do. No matter what happens to us in the ministry, it is encouraging to know that the Word of God won't be bound. The Apostle Paul uh, made mention of that. He said that uh, uh, it, you know the Word of God is not bound. It doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter uh, if it's fair, if it's not, not fair. Uh, he said there in verse number 9, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the Word of God is not bound. And that's something that we can learn from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul did not allow his circumstances to dictate whether he preached the word or whether he didn't preach the word. He always looked for openings and opportunities to preach the word. Uh, even though he was suffering as an evildoer, not, not that he was an evildoer, he was being falsely accused of being an evildoer. You see that all through the book of Acts as he's going uh, on his missionary trips and, and what have you. As he's going through these different areas, uh, uh, you remember when he was in uh, Philippi, uh, he, he was accused of, of uh, uh, sedition, basically, and uh, they cast him into the prison. And, and what did he do when he was in prison there in Acts chapter 16? They put him in the deepest part of the dungeon and the worst part that you could possibly go to. And uh, uh, he, he was down there and he sang praises unto the Lord. And uh, in, in doing so, uh, some miraculous things happened. The other prisoners were able to witness and see uh, how it is that he went through things. So it's like we're told in First Peter chapter three, verse number fifteen, that uh, as we go through suffering, that's the context of First Peter chapter three is suffering. As we go through suffering, and people see that we take it differently than they normally do, and as a Christian, we're supposed to go through suffering differently than the rest of the world goes through suffering. We're supposed to go through suffering differently. We're supposed to go through the good times differently. We are supposed to be different than the world. Uh, we, we, we're a called out assembly. Uh, the Lord says uh, that we're, we're to, to come out from among them and uh, be ye holy. And that's what we're called to do. So when we go through suffering, we if we go through it appropriately, because uh, we can go through suffering with joy, because joy is something that comes from within us. Okay, joy is different than happiness. A lot of times people want to uh, look at things and they want to equate joy and happiness as meaning the same thing, but but they don't. Happiness is based on happening. It, it's based on what is going on in your life, whether you're happy or whether you're not happy. It depends on your circumstances, but you can have joy irregardless of your circumstances. You can have joy through the suffering because... You can look at it like the Apostle Paul did, even though he was suffering, even though he didn't deserve it, even though it was a false accusation. He was being put into places and into situations and circumstances that allowed him to preach the gospel, to preach the word of God. And otherwise, he may not have gotten those opportunities with those individuals, or even if he did, because they were in a different situation, in different circumstance, maybe they would not have been as attentive to the Word of God. So it's encouraging for us as Christians to know, as as uh, as as we're in the ministry, that uh, even when we go through suffering, the Word of God is not bound. The Word of God still goes out. It's also encouraging to know that if we suffer with the Lord, we're going to reign with Him as well. Uh, the, Keeping that in mind is going to help you to stay in the fight. A lot of people want to give up and they want to throw in the towel. They want to quit because it's hard, because they're suffering. And, and, and somehow they perceive that if they weren't living for the Lord, they wouldn't be suffering so much, which is a fallacy anyway. 
th th there's no evidence that would point to that at all. Um, but uh, th they, they want to quit. But if, if we keep in mind the fact that we're being promised here, that if we will suffer with him, we will also reign with him. There in verse 12, and then it says, if we deny him, he will also deny us. Now, that's not denying us our salvation. That's denying us the opportunity to reign. That's what's being dealt with in that verse there. So if we will suffer with him, if we, if we will go through suffering, if we won't throw in the towel, if we won't quit, if we, if, if we don't give up and uh, uh, de decide to, to go back, you know, quote unquote, to the, uh, to the old life, if we'll go through the suffering and we'll, we'll stay committed and loyal to the Lord and to his cause, he says that uh, the reward that we will get for that is uh, uh, we will be able to reign with him in his millennial kingdom. If we refuse to do that, if we quit, we throw in the towel, we decide we're not going to church anymore, we're not, we're not going to uh, witness anymore, we're not going to read our Bible anymore and all those things, that's going to that's gonna hurt your relationship with him. It's going to kill your fellowship with him. But you still have eternal life. The Bible says that we have eternal life. It's something that is a current possession. It's something that you currently have. First John chapter 5 and verse number 13 says, These things have we written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, not think or hope or wish, but that you may know that you have eternal life. Have. Current possession. It's something that you already have, so it's not something that you can lose. You're not going to lose your salvation, but you'll lose the opportunity to reign with the Lord. That's what's being deal dealt with there. So knowing uh, uh, these facts... Uh, the, the, that, that should encourage us uh, to follow the command that we have here in verse number 15, which, of course, is the only place in the Bible uh, that, that you're commanded to study the Word of God. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Uh, in other words, if you don't study the Word of God, you will be ashamed. We should study the Word of God so that we can fulfill our calling and so that we don't get derailed like Hymenaeus and Philetus did. Hymenaeus and Philetus were fooled into thinking that the resurrection had already happened, that the resurrection was just talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it was just a spiritual resurrection, and there wasn't a future resurrection to look forward to. And, uh, but we know that there is a future resurrection to be looked forward to, uh, but they didn't realize that and they didn't understand that. Why? Because they refused to study the Word of God. They didn't know the Scriptures. Look, the only way to protect yourself from false doctrines is to study the Word of God. If you refuse to study the Word of God, regardless of how solid that you may think that you are in your faith, you will uh, be susceptible to being fooled into believing things that just quite simply are not true. You have to study the Word of God. That's a command that we're given. We need to study the Word of God because the ministry is hard. We need to study the Word of God because that's the thing that's going to enable us to endure hardness. I hope this was a blessing to you. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for today's Bible study. For more information, please visit us at www.irvingtonbiblebaptistchurch.com Dot com. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy above seal it for thy courts above